So today we're gonna have a special guest, um, Amir over at Sprint Ray, talk about his Moon Ray 3D printer. how you guys started and stuff. Sure, thank you, Will. Yeah. Pleasure to be here with you guys. Uh, we were doing our PhDs in 2013 with my co-founder, Jing. Nice. And we were doing like research, deep research into different printing approaches, metal, ceramic, concrete. Nice. So we knew the opportunity and we we're not happy with the products out there. Back then, we had access to like high-end FDMs, super difficult to work with. We had a lab technician who was allowed <laughs> to <laughs> touch it. And then after a while, every one of us started to make his own printer. We made FDMs, the RepRap machines, okay. definitely made those. Yeah. And, but I always wanted to do something in SLA, uh, stereolithography, the surface finish, the, uh, the resolution you get out of it. Everything makes sense. I mean, FDM is great technology, but the surface finish, you see the layers, I agree. The details you get out of it. I was always fascinated by, by how much details you can get out of uh, SLA. That's why we got into it. A lot of failures until we got a good prototype. Yeah, until you made it. That's yeah. awesome. Because I, I remember seeing you guys on Kickstarter, and that's kind of what caught my attention back then to hit up you guys and uh, to test out the unit at the time. Um, and when we got it, it was it was awesome, right? It was there. We had the Titan one um, back then, and Titan one. Um, no comment on that, <laughs> so we'll just leave it as is. And then I was kind of iffy when we, when we tested yours, just because the technology is so new. But man, that these guys, your printers blew me away. We had probably one fail out of fifty prints that we did, and the resolution Thank itself you. was amazing, right? Um, like I agree, uh, you can't compare this with FDM. FDM is just you know cheaper parts, but the quality from this machine is it's amazing, right? Um, so I mean, what's the difference between SLA and DLP for you guys? Uh, well. SLA and DRP, stereolithography is the core technology, or SLA, make it simplified, that we're, we're using, which is uh, curing resin layer by layer. So you have two ways of curing resin, either with a DLP projector that you shoot the entire 2D layer at, at once, the other one is using a laser beam going back and forth and carving on the, on the resin all the details out. So DLP gives you a lot more speed because you're making the entire 2D layer at once. And also because of the diameter of the laser beam versus the pixels of the projector we're, we're doing, you get two, three times more resolution at least. Nice, nice. So I mean, what is what is the build platform and the speed on your printer, on this current printer? In this current <coughs> printer, we can do five by three and a three point five by eight inches tall. Okay. And uh, we can do up to one inch per hour. So the speed doesn't depend at on. Uh, the level of details on the parts. I'm sure everyone with uh, with some experience in FDM knows that the more parts you put on the platform, the longer it takes. Correct. The more details your part have, it's going to be uh, slower. But this particular technology, we don't care at all. Doesn't matter how many parts you have. Doesn't matter how much detail your part is. Speed will be the same. So that's why it's going to benefit a lot of people who wants the fast speed, who wants three, four iteration of the same model at the same time instead of printing one, waiting to finish, printing the next one. So in two hours, you can get four prototypes out of it quickly. Nice, that's awesome. And I know you, you guys have your own software, right? So it's integrated software, and just, it's open source or not? Well, it's not open source. We have our own reasons for not making it open. The most important one is control over reliability, accuracy, the type of resins that go inside of the machine. Uh, our focus from the beginning was to make it as reliable as possible. I remember you were talking about you, your experience in getting the machine. So yeah. You wanted to, uh, how was it? You said it worked. I mean, yeah, I, I was iffy just because we had the Titan 1 we, we had before right. and it's, it was really hard to even get a print out of that. So when we tested yours, it worked. It was, it was a plug and play basically. Just put, it, put in a model. And then maybe a few tweaks on the software, and that was it. That was it. It printed. Yeah. I remember you guys picked up the machine in our office. Yeah, and like yeah. That. I was so nervous. <laughs> I was one of the few, the early, you know, yeah, yeah. probably second or third machine that went out. Nice. So I was just keeping my fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. Please work. But luckily, <laughs> yeah, it things worked. worked out. Yeah, it worked. Pretty well. Yeah, it worked. We had an amazing Kickstarter community. Just wanted to say thank you to all of them. Gave us their support, their money, their hope, and everything. 
they were so patient with us they, and they got it to work I and mean, we were all impressed how technical they were <laughs> to deal with the issues and get the, I mean make this a successful project Thank yeah you. yeah that's awesome it's, it's good to see you guys grow because that like I mentioned I saw you guys at Kickstarter and we basically started almost the same time the two companies right that's true and seeing you guys growing us growing it, it's, a, it's a good thing you know we're still here you know still not strong in the game um, I mean I know you guys have competitors, so why don't you guys tell us what, what makes you guys different from your competitors or what makes your machine better than your competitors? Uh, well, we think about this product as an ecosystem, a software, hardware material. So we don't believe in selling kits, we don't believe in selling open platform, take the software from, from some other guy. We think that if you want to have a reliable print, if your user wants to have a good experience, everything should be well thought. You get a lot of questions between, you know, the different SLA printers out there in DLP, the main ones are usually Moonray and Formlabs. Right. Uh, we never try Formlabs, um, so when people ask us, we would just tell them go to Moonray because we test it out. We know it's, it's a quality machine. So why don't you like tell us, us something about the difference between your printer and Formlabs? Right. Well, we beat them in every aspect except one thing, which is the market share. <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, joking aside, they have a great company and a great product, definitely one of the leaders. Uh, we offer a lot uh, more speed, but up to 10 times faster than what Form 2 can do. And we're about two to three times more in uh, higher in resolution. So the amount of details, tiny holes, tiny, let's say you're printing a character, you want some good texture on the skin, wrinkles, we get a lot of character from good artists. Those will come out better and sharper Nice. versus an SLA laser, it, it looks like an out of focus picture. Got it. And it's more sharp and crisp with our technology. The next one I can tell is, which matters a lot to consumers, is the cost of running and maintenance. So our particular resin tank technology that we have, users can print up to 50 liters of material without having to replace it. Wow, nice. And uh, if something happens to the resin tank, it's the user who punctured it or scratched it. There's no chemical or uh, there's no chemical wear and tear, unlike the other technologies out there. And reliability also is another thing. We have one projector, less moving parts. We don't have galva galvanometer. The mirrors are shooting the yeah. uh, laser inside of it. So overall, user will have a better experience, more reliable printing. Uh, and also high resolutions in a in a shorter time. Nice. I mean, so that clip that sums it up between you guys and Form Labs, because um, we do get asked a lot about that. Um, and I guess another thing is it's the the bed itself, um, your tray. That's a big problem a lot of SLA printers. Like, but you mentioned that you can go 50, which is amazing because I mean, that's a big issue with the tanks itself. Um, why don't you tell tell them something about the tanks? I mean, we are using a two part kind of tanks this we also made the top part replaceable so if something happens to the top part the user doesn't need to replace the whole thing they just can't buy the the top part from our store and replace it well, why don't you show them I mean, oh well, yeah, yeah. Why don't you show something like so tank? Yeah, let me explain you to you yeah, yeah. On the, this is our new resin tank actually okay. we read this we got a lot of good feedback from our Kickstarter community and all the users who bought it after so one of the things they wanted was a better drain yeah so we redesigned this uh, resin can go easily out of it the min and max indicator on this top and the bottom is glass so user knows that his use is printing on a on a flat surface versus other technology that are gel or not a God. flat surface so it'll be wrinkly this top part, which is white, can be replaced. So if a user puncture it, if damage it, uh, for whatever reason, they can easily replace it. Nice, so there you go, that's the tank itself, right? Yeah, easily replaceable and reversible. If you want different materials, you can have different tanks. There is a lid on it, so you can put store in your nice. cabinet or a drawer. You can replace it with the next tank. Easy. So now, do they, do they have to use your resin or could they use third party? But very good question. Obviously, obviously, it's recommended we, to use your own. We recommend yeah. using our own resin, uh, but other companies have developed resin for us. Uh, we always guarantee the best quality and the best experience uh, if you use our material. Correct. And we're all constantly working on material to make it better. Again, we're gathering feedback from customers. I remember one of the uh, early feedbacks we got on resin was. Uh, settlements of the pigments 
I'm not sure if you guys had this issue. You guys I had the clear. The clear. Yeah, the, the clear was more yellow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now we're, it's more, more clear. clear. Got it. So on our white resin and gray resin, that which was one of the best sellers of ours, uh, the pigments were settling. Ah, okay. If you let this uh, sit. resin sit in the, in the tank for a while, we reformulated all of those. We're also working on new type of materials, more functional if user wanted. We get asked a lot, do you have flexible resin? Do you Got have it. tough resin? Do you have any high performance durable resin? So we're constantly working on it. We believe that it's a package. There's no buy the resin from that guy, buy the software from that guy. It should be a one package if you, the user wants to have a good experience. So nice. We're that's working on it. I remember you guys had like a nice blue, a transparent blue. Are you guys still making that? That was a there good is no, color. We, no? We, no, dropped we dropped red, we dropped green. Okay. Orange might be dropped pretty soon. Okay. But we added black, which is more functional for people to do characters. Got it. Clear and we have a gray. We reformulated that gray. Our matte matte gray became pretty popular within the ZBrush community because it replicates the color of the primer gray. So we reformulated that one. It also has a nice shade of blue in it. So it's pretty, pretty nice. Even if you don't want a primer, if you don't want to paint it, it looks nice. Yeah, nice. So yeah, that's all the colors. White, gray, black, clear. Nice. Maybe orange with it, <laughs> might drop it. So I mean, most of our consumer um, clients actually, we do a lot of ZBrush organic sculpting. Um, I'm not sure if that's your market range or what do you guys sell more towards? Or sure, yeah, ZBrush. We also always had a good relationship with the ZBrush community. From day one, we had amazing artists uh, participating in our campaign. We went to ZBrush Summit last year. Nice. We got a great response from the community. And uh, sure, we always know that these are the people using. It always feels good to see them using our yeah, product. Yeah. We learn a lot from their experience. From day one, we had a good relationship with the ZBrush company. The first early people we kind of got on board to help us build the campaign. Tim King, Joe exactly. McCallum, yeah. Eddie Yang, they were all like ZBrush artists. And we were always blown away with the level of details they create on those sculptures. And Murray works pretty well with the exports of ZBrush, OBJ, or STL. And the details you get out of it, all that, we know that they care about single line that they put on it's the characters. Yeah. That's why we always recommend the high resolution machine because they can carve more characters, more textures to those uh, surfaces and get it out of it after the print because that matters. So there is no like post-processing, post-processing. There's a cleaning process involved, okay. which includes uh, getting rid of the uncured resin from the surface. Okay. If you try to wipe it, it's gonna stay there. Yeah. So you have to dip it in alcohol, rinse it in alcohol, IPA, 99%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let it sit there for five, 10 minutes, if you have more time. If you don't have time, you can rinse it constantly. And then the next step is blowing the air, uh, blowing the alcohol off of the surface. Uh, if you let the alcohol sit on it, it's, it's going to become sticky. So it, it's just a more detailed cleaning rather than post-processing. Nice. And you know, what, a lot of parts come with support and there's another process involved in terms of breaking the support and if the user wants to be support. Our support structure actually looks nice. Yeah, I saw it. We have, nice. yeah, yeah. We have a lot of people who don't want to take the support off because it looks good. Yeah. It's <laughs> kind of part of the yeah. structure. But if they want to uh, get rid of it, they can easily trim it. It comes off easy. It's also very optimized. It's not going to waste a lot of material. It's an architectural kind of structure in it. So, and then the regular uh, cleaning. Well, what do you do after, in general, for get, getting rid of the supports? Um, so we we'll clean that. it with alcohol, like you mentioned. Um, we'll put it under sunlight uh -huh. with water. Put it in the water, leave it in the sun yeah. for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you put it under UV light right. lamp, yeah. That's what right. we're gonna do. So, so let me then, the then tell you, because you, in our resins, except the cast of a resin, you don't need to post cure. The strength after the, uh, right off the machine is pretty good. Okay. You really don't need to do any post curing. The only time I recommend post cure if you want like a, a shiny surface on, on the other material. It's good to put the red, the, let the resin sit on it, then cure it immediately there under the sunlight yeah. or UV cure. But if you are good with the matte finish of it, you don't need to post cure at all. Nice, that's good so to know. No sunlight, just get rid of the, uh, the uncured ah, resin. Nice, that's good, good to know. Good. Nice. So I mean, uh, I know you guys have the dental machine too. Um, now, what's the difference between the two? 
Good. The difference is resolution. Dental requires high resolution, and this on top of resolution, dimensional accuracy is the most important thing they want. Uh, think about it. If you're printing a character, you don't care if it's two inch by two inch or two point zero Correct. five by <laughs> yeah, two point zero five. Matter. But when it comes to dental, we're dealing with people's teeth. Yeah. It has to be accurate. Precise. So in the past year, we spent a lot of time with dentists, with dental labs, dental technicians to make sure to get bring their dimensional accuracy to what's acceptable in the clinical requirements. So that unit guarantees a phenomenal dimensional accuracy for uh, for printing models, for printing crumbs and bridges and RPDs, stuff like that. Nice. So what is the accuracy on the S then? So on the S is 100 micron on XY on the Z, you can go up to 20 micron a, uh, for for a model. Okay. We always recommend to stick to 50 if you want a fast print, go to 100. Yeah. 20 is more favorable for uh, printing castable models because if it's going to be cast later, you care about the surface. So, in our office, if you, I'm sure you've been in our yeah. office, everything is at 50 micron. We don't waste our time with 20 at all. Yeah. 100 if you want a fast draft, mm -hmm. we do 100, but 50 micron is kind of our, our guaranteed resolution. <laughs> it's a good balance between yeah. surface finish and speed. So, you know, I'm pretty excited that we're going to start a partnership with you guys. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, growing with you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah, we're also excited. We believe that it takes real people to get make a product real. So I'm excited people can come here, check out the machine, check you using it, you teaching them how to use it.